Hi everyone. How are you today? Hope everyone is doing good. Today is Sunday here in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I thought I would uh, make a video. I'm just doing some simple plates. So I didn't know how exciting it would be. But I thought, you know, I've done so many plates on thrown on the wheel and they never turn out. Um, I have such a problem with S cracks when I throw them on the wheel. And I think it has something to do with how they dry on the bats. You know, you're not able to get them off the bat right away. <clears throat> and um, because it's a wide surface, you know, it dries up much quicker on the outside than it does the inside. And I think it creates stress there in the center. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing I love these little kitty cats because... Um, I rolled out this whole slab of clay on my slab roller and um, I went to the bathroom and came back and noticed that there's paw prints all over it. So, um, but I can, hopefully I can rub it out with a rib. <laughs> They're so curious though. That's Millie there who just uh, loves to like walk and walk all over the table. And anyway, she steals my sponges and everything. I don't, I don't know what the fetish is with sponges and kitty cats, but it was a new one on me when I got them. Anyway, so here is the plate. Very simple, very simple plate. Um, and, it, and and I never had problems with cracks, S cracks on them. So that's why, um, you know, I thought I would show how to do them because to me it's much easier, much simpler than throwing them on the wheel. Well, throwing them on the wheel is easy, but I don't know. I don't have a lot of luck with them. So I'm gonna show you how to do them real easy easy unless you have a cat so here is my let's see if you can I'll point you over here in this direction see this that's my slab roll and that's my cat sitting on my sitting on sitting on there anyway so here's what I use these are the simple plastic dishes they're like cookie trays or something you know that you can get from your well I got them from my local little store up the street but like Target or Walmart or you know someplace like that would carry them now this one is um, let's see here this one is 12 inches across so it will shrink and it'll make a nice size um, probably about 11 inch oops sorry about 11 inch plate and I, I like my plates a little on the larger side um, I don't know I just do but so yeah, so these are very simple. See, they have about, um, I want to say about an inch and a half depth. I have to remember, let's see here. Yeah, about, um, about an inch and a quarter, actually a little bit less. So, but these are, um, like I said, these are like 99 cents a piece or something. I bought like 10 of them. So that, this is, this is the way to go. Um, but you can find them like on the holidays, like obviously those are Christmas, but Easter, uh, 4th of July, you can find them. So, so see how the sides flare out? I'm gonna actually use this to cut out my plate. Like I said, this is so simple. So let me roll this, fold back my canvas here. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Lots of little kitty prints in there, so I have to smooth it out. I'm just going to lay this down here. So you can see me cut around here with a needle tool. I'm falling exactly around the edge of this plate. And you'll also see me, I'm going to um, paint uh, pumpkins on these. I was going to do my pumpkin plates in the shape of a pumpkin, but I thought, well, why not? Just, I think I'll cut out a couple of them on here. So when you're picking these up, um, be gentle with them because you don't want to stretch it. Kind of made a mark, mark there. I was going to go outside today and do some gardening, but it's hot here. Not hot like out in the 
out west. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're really getting it out there. Now these scraps you see here, I'm going to dip these in the water and then lay them aside so that when I come back to use these, they're not so dry that I can't wedge them and use them. That's the, that's the trick to not have a lot of leftover clay that you, that you can't use. Because sometimes when I'm sitting here working, um, in fact, what I think I'll do is just take my sponge and dribble some water over them. Because if I'm, sometimes if I'm sitting here for three, four hours, your clay gets hard, you know, the scraps, and then you're left with all these scraps. So I'm going to cover this back up because it helps keep them moist. There we go. I could lay, you know what I could lay on there is my piece of wood so the cats don't walk and leave impressions. Oh, I lost you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so here are my slabs. You can see the thickness. I like my plates also somewhat thick. Um, that is probably, that's, a, that's a, a good quarter inch. Because when I'm compressing them, I don't want them to compress them to be so thin. And then I don't want it to be so, um, I don't like to make mugs or bowls or plates so thin. I know a lot of potters think, um, you know, the thinner they are, you know, the more skilled they are, the better they are. But um, for me, the truth of it is <laughs> they're trying to save clay and I'm a klutz. So when I'm washing my dishes in the sink, I don't want a bowl or a mug or a plate that's so thin and you tap it against the side of the sink and it breaks. So, um, oh, here she comes. Shoot. You are not going to walk on these ones I just did. Um, so yeah, in, in, in a coffee mug that's so thin, it's going to, you know, your tea, your coffee's going to cool down so fast, it's not going to stay hot very long. So personally, um, you know, I like a little bit thicker pottery. All right, move aside there, Millie Sue, Millie, whatever your name is, Millie, I can, we, we call her a lot of names, Millie Sue, uh, Silly Millie, whatever. <laughs> now she's sitting on my stuff. <sighs> that cat, you look at her over there. You're just sitting there. Yeah, we're watching you because you're being a bad girl. <laughs> okay, so I know some of you are probably thinking, move on, lady. <laughs> All right, I'm moving on. I'm going to lower you down here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, come on, Melly. Come on, move over there. So I'm going to compress this. And it really, you know, you're not really compressing it. But if there's air bubbles in there, it will compress the air out, the, the bubbles will surface. This one's leaving some little marks. I'm gonna use a different one. There we go. Oh, shoot. There we go. There we go, that's, that's much uh, smoother. Cause this is B-Mix 5 with grog. So it does have grog in it. The grog helps to keep the clay the clay's shape. It helps it to stop from warping. It helps it to stay sturdy. Um, helps it to keep it from cracking. Um, so I, I like it. Um, so I'm going to compress that side. Now I'm going to gently flip it over. I'm actually going to pick it up from the opposite side that I originally picked it up so that if it d did um, come out of shape a little bit, now it'll, now it'll be out, out of shape. It'll, sorry, <coughs> it'll put it back in shape this way. Wait a minute, I got a, I got a frog in my throat. I'm gonna steal some water from my, my squirt bottle. <coughs> All of a sudden, all of a sudden, my throat's all scratchy. Oh, shoot. Don't you hate that when you're doing that? And <laughs> I 
Now this clay is fresh out of the bag, but the last one I got a little brown spot. So whoever ran this through the pug mill at uh, Laguna, I've got brown spots. So I'll have to make sure that I, I can either dig it out or I can just leave it in there. And I'm just going to leave it in there. I keep a wet sponge here. So then, so my rib, I constantly just wipe it off there because I don't want clay boogers on here. When they get hard and then I go to compress it, they'll put a gouge in there. I don't want that. So, okay. So the next step is I'm just taking cornstarch. This is just simple, cheap cornstarch, and I got a big brush in there, just like this. And I'm just going to brush it on here. You don't want too much on. You don't want you don't want chunks, but this will keep it from sticking to the plastic tray. And you don't want to put this on the tray. It's got to be on the clay because it sticks to the clay. It won't stick to the plastic tray but yeah so you want it you want it here okay so that is good I do want to smooth down these edges a little bit before I flip it in there I could put my stamp on here now sometimes I wait till it stiffens up a little bit I lost my other one I ordered I don't know what happens to them. This one is one I bought from, I think it was Cookie Cookie Creations on on Etsy. They were like, it was like $25. There we go. Okay, so now, Millie, come on, you need to move, honey. You need to move. Now I'm going to gently pick this up. And I'm just going to lay it on top of this tray. When you lay it down, you want to make sure it's even all the way around, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to smooth my edges down. And you can smooth them down, uh, smooth them down again um, when it's leather hard. I just got my fingernail in there again. Darn it. Ugh. I don't even have any fingernails and they still they still catch. I don't know how that happens. I hope everybody out there is doing well. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a video of this. Um, I don't know. I figured you guys probably already knew how to do this, but it's so simple. And um, like I said, I'm going to paint some, hand paint some pumpkins on there for um, my Weber's Farm Family Pumpkin Festival in October. There we go. I like to get them. Um, pretty much done so that we're when they're in here and they dry they are pretty much done so I can see it's a little off so I'm going to gently move it over there we go so now I've got it laying on here even okay so then here's all I'm going to do look there you go and then I'm just going to smooth it down a little bit Now it looks like I had it a little off because it's look it's not showing a little bit more over here than it is over here, but that's okay. You're not gonna notice that once you have it out of here. But that's look how deep that is. It's nice. It's a nice it's a nice wide plate. Um and I don't like I don't like plates that are perfect anyway. I kinda like them when they're um, there's this one potter who makes them and they're all, um, they're all somewhat the same size, but they're very uneven around and I just love those. And it's, I think it's sometimes it's harder to make things uneven than it is even, <laughs> but so I'm going to set that one aside. I've got another one over here. 
The real trick will be to get them to dry without more kitty kitty prints on them. So here's another one again that I got. This one's got snowmen on there. But yeah, I think these were um, now these are made by Chef Craft. Uh, this one says 11 and 3 fourth inches wide. But yeah, Chef Craft. I guess we're made in China or something. But yeah, these make the perfect the perfect uh, trays or plates plates. So let's uh, let me smooth this down a little bit. The canvas leaves quite an indentation in these uh, in the clay, which is you know which is fine for the bottom. But I do paint on the bottom too, so so I'm going to smooth this out the best I can. Look at more dark clay. Somebody must have, I don't know, dropped some dark clay in there. Because these, like I said, these are fresh out of the, uh, the bag. I was throwing um, a bowl on the wheel last week. And a piece of metal uh, came up in the bowl. Which I'm really thankful that it didn't uh, cut me. Thank goodness there wasn't any more. I don't know, a piece of the machinery must have fallen off in the clay. Okay, so I'm gonna... Now some people keep their cornstarch in a stocking and then just, you know, dab it on here. And that actually works... Uh, I think it actually probably works better than the, the brush because it doesn't leave any chunks and wherever there's a thick spot it will leave an indentation in the clay it will all burn out but okay here's my tray i'm going to gently pick this up I'll lay it down So we're really getting into the the season where people buy a lot of gifts and things. So now is your time to make make a lot of stuff. And if you can make things, you know, fairly quickly, you can, you know, you can make some profit. You can make some money. It's not easy unless you're really good and you get into a gallery or uh, or like I said, there's you know the production potters who who work night and day. And I used to do a lot of that, but I don't do so much of that anymore. I used to be up till two o'clock in the morning glazing and oh my gosh, till my hands, till my hands couldn't move anymore. Oh my gosh, trying to get ready for some of these shows. And then now I don't, uh, look at how nice this is. I just squeegee it off of there and it's nice and clean but I don't get into as many shows now anymore my uh, arthritis just uh, is acting up and just can't lift all that stuff anymore alright so I'm going to gently pick this up again and I'm actually going to flip it over a little bit just to double check that I've got enough cornstarch on the back. Because I noticed the water got underneath the edge and I don't want that edge sticking. There we go. Put my name on here. The hardest part is picking them up and not getting your fingerprints on there. Kind of like you're putting a pie crust in here. 
There we go. Feels like it's pretty even. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it scared Millie off. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to smooth this down a little bit again because got my fingerprints in it. Like I said, once these get leather hard and I get them out of the trays here, um, I will I will touch them up again a little a little bit if I have to. Usually don't have to too much. As long as I can keep the kitty cats out of here. Yeah, but. You gotta be careful um, what sponge you use too. This is a very, um, this is the Mud Tools. It's a very compressed sponge. Um, it's very dense. So that when you're smearing down or smoothing down the edges, it doesn't take away a lot of the silt and it doesn't leave a lot of the grog behind. Some sponges um, that are, well, like this one here. This is just the one that I cut in half. You can use see like that one. If you used one like that, it would um, it would just smear all the wipe all the silt away and just leave. You'd have a real grog, a lot of grog on the edges. And then if you like sand paper, which you can sand down later, but how about we do one, do one more? Let's do one more. See if I can find the. Uh, let me find my needle tool. Let's get one more out of here. And then I'll sh when, I, when I disc fire them, I'll let you, um, I'll let you see how I paint them. Let's see here. Try to get as many out of here as I can before I have to re-roll it. water on there. There you go. Keep that clay moist. Oh, there we go. It's like making pie crust. <laughs> gonna make a, a pumpkin video of me making pumpkins but I do have one someone reminded me that I did have a video of making pumpkins which so if you just uh, put um, pumpkins in the oh it's crooked what happened there we go if you put pumpkins in the search on top of my page you will find everything I made with pumpkins and I threw some on the wheel and I handmade some and I call them windowsill pumpkins because they're narrow and you can put them on your mantle or your windowsill they're not they're not your typical fat pumpkins and they, they turn out so nice and I I always sell them really well so they're a good they're a good sale item Smooth around the edges here. Yeah, I see a lot of people make plates and they, the biggest mistake they make is um, when they put them on the, the tray, they smooth down the edges so much that they get these thin, sharp edges. 
and you don't want to you don't want to over overwork them. We get some cornstarch here. Just kind of sprinkle it on and gently brush it off. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and share. It really helps me to build my channel. I don't do so many videos that will hound you, that's for sure. <laughs> some people do oh my gosh a video every day and it, it is fun to watch them though but i don't have that much exciting stuff going on in my life to do a video every day <laughs> oh you guys would be bored i'm a homebody at heart i am um, i'm very happy at home I forgot to compress the side as I'm talking, and I didn't compress this side. So now I'm going to have to uh, I could take it back out of there. I think I will. Oh, darn. There we go. There. Now I can compress this side. I think, you know, I think some people have used sheets. You know, thin like old bed sheets instead of the canvas in the rollers so that uh, you don't have these thick designs in there. I gotta smooth the, the sides down again. Yeah, so my next show is in two weeks. That's the West Side Market. It's um, here in Cincinnati. It's Saturday, the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Um, I can't remember what date that is, but it's 10 to 3. And it's at the Westwood Town Hall here on Montana and Harrison Avenue in Epworth here in Cincinnati. And so um, they do that once a month. They do that the first Saturday of every month. I'm gonna wring out my sponge as much as possible and just touch up that back again one more time. And I'm gonna let you fine folks go. But these are the easiest, simplest plates. Now when I fire these in my bisque kiln, I am going to stand them up on their side like that. Now you don't want them, you don't, when you put them in your kiln, you don't want to lean in this way. You know, you want them straight up. And that's how I will fire them. I'll fire them all standing up like that. I'll put some stilts over here and then I'll stack the first one and then each one against there. Um, yeah, so just like this. That's how I'll, I'll stack them, you know. I'll probably do 10 of them stacked up like that. Oops, I need my, you need the tray, Lisa. you need the tray. Um, I find uh, much more success with firing them on their sides than laying them flat. Because when you lay them flat and they're in the kiln, you know, anything like a platter or plates, that's why, that's why these are um, harder to fire without getting cracks in them. Because they, when they're heating up, the outside's going to heat up really fast, but the inside's not. So you have this stress between what's hot and what's cold, and the clay shrinking and moving, and it creates stress, and you have stress cracks. Um, and the same way when it's cooling down, the outside edge is going to cool down much faster than the inside. So, you know, your clay is shrinking as it's... Uh, cooking in there it shrinks more in the glaze fire than the bisque fire but um, but yeah so you don't you don't have that you have a much more even heating up and cooling down when they're when you fire them on their sides instead of uh, the bottoms there we go 
There you go. That's all you got to do. How simple is that? Yeah, so try not to use the sponge too much because you don't want that, you don't want a rough surface. But like I said, I don't, I don't like to come back and touch them really too much. Once I've got them in here, I kind of just let them go. There we go. Just kind of smooth the inside down a little bit. You can work them into the edge, into the creases here, but I don't. I like them to be um, a little more gradual. I don't. I don't like to work them in here too much, and then you know, then it looks like they were in a tray. <laughs> and you don't really want them to look like they were in a tray, right? So that's all I have. Thanks for watching, and like I said, um, they're so easy to make, um, and and you know, and then you can paint whatever you want on them. Now these I didn't do any texture on because I'm going to paint pumpkins on there with my underglazes, and so I'll do a video on that too. But um, if I wasn't going to um, paint with underglazes. I would do a texture on here and you can well the textures you can use are endless so use your imagination and have fun always have fun <laughs> all right thanks for watching um i'll be having another video soon i might do one of painting uh my mugs um i've done similar ones like that before with uh under glazes um and they're like different colors and you know you put the stamps on all that kind of stuff so but I do have like six to do, so I might do a uh, video of that too. And I'm um, trying to think of what other some good videos I have to do. Um, I think I did one of my Santa gnomes. But, um, oh, and snowmen. I gotta do a snowman one too. Oh, and the Christmas trees. But I'm gonna wait a little bit on the Christmas trees. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.